and clap again. Amen. Yes, yes. Fantastic job. Amen. And ushering us into the presence of God. Amen. Amen, man. You know, she said, even when you don't feel good, I was feeling a little rough this morning, but God's able. He's able. He's able. So we thank God this morning. Uh, last week, we dealt with what path are you walking on? And I want to come back this week and talk about the path again, but I want to talk about get on the right path. Get on the right path. It's very important that we're on the right path. And I want to come out of Jeremiah, and I want to look at this thing with Jeremiah. And y'all know about Jeremiah, that weeping prophet, right? He was that weeping prophet. Jeremiah 6, 16, and it says this. It says, thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, listen, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Lord, we don't want to walk in your, your way. We don't want to do what you want us to do. And it sounds like the world today, they really don't want to walk in the way of God. Are y'all with me? But they want to do their own thing, and this is what they were doing in Jeremiah's time, and that's why they called him the weeping prophet. Nobody came to God. Nobody wanted to hear about God, and he was frustrated, but God always came to encourage him and to give him a word to give to his people. And now, understand this, they are now accountable to that very word that they got. Every time you get a word, whether it's studying on your own, whether it's teaching from me or somebody else, whether it's preaching, you are accountable for the word that you got. Am I right? Huh. Introduction. The days of Jeremiah's ministry to the people of Israel were days of deep spiritual wickedness. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet, the crybaby prophet. Amen? Israel found themselves under the divine judgment. They had rejected God. God calls them to repent, but they refuse to repent. Does that sound familiar? God has called the world to repent, but the world does not want to repent. The world said they know God, but they really don't know God but they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof, the Bible says. Am I right? So God had also forbidden Jeremiah to even get married. He said, don't marry them. Jeremiah, I know, he's like, man, I want to get married. God, he said, no, don't you even marry them. Look at this. Look at Jeremiah 16 real quick. 16 verse 1. I want y'all to walk with me this morning. Amen? God had forbidden him to get married. Look what he says in verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah said, and you shall not take a wife, nor shall you have sons or daughters in this place. For thus says, you notice he says, in this place. For thus says the Lord concerning the sons and the daughters who are born in this place, and concerning the mothers who bore them and the fathers who fathered them in this land, in this place, they shall die of deadly disease. They shall not be lamented, don't cry for them, nor shall, there be, they, nor shall they be buried. They shall be as dung. Y'all know what dung is? Doo-doo. On the surface of the ground, they shall perish by the sword and by famine, and their dead bodies shall be food for the birds of the air and for the beasts of the earth. Somebody said, that's hard. You, you preaching that, Pastor, but it's in the book. I'm not preaching anything outside of the book. Look what he says. Verse 5. For thus says the Lord, do not enter the house of mourning. Don't even go to the funeral. If they die, don't even go to the funeral. Don't even pay respects. Do y'all get that? Or go to lamb and or grieve for them. For I have taken away my peace from this people. My steadfast love and my mercy declares the Lord. You know, God forbid him to get married, but then he told Hosea to get married. Y'all remember that? Hosea now, he's sitting there, and God says, I need you to go marry a harlot. I need you to go marry this woman who has loved another, this woman who is unfaithful, but I want you to go marry this woman. Are y'all with me? Y'all don't believe me, do you? Look at, look at uh, Hosea real quick. I think y'all looking at me like I got eight heads up in this joke. 
Uh, Look, what is it? Um, I think it's one. I think it's the first chapter. Hosea. I didn't have that in my notes, but I'm going to pull this up because y'all think I'm joking. The Lord, it says the word of the Lord, verse 1, 1. Chapter verse 1, verse, verse 1. The Lord of the Lord, watch it. The word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Barah, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joaz, king of Israel, when the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, go take yourself a wife of what? Of whoredom, a whore, and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Goma and the daughter of De, uh, Debulam, and she conceived and bore him a son. Uh, long story short, God told him to go marry this whore. And you say, why would God, a holy God, go tell this man to go marry a whore? Because he wanted him to understand and to relate to what he was going through. God was going through a nation that was whores. They were, they, they were committing whoredom against God. And so God says, in order for you to be effective, Hosea, you got to feel what I feel. You got to know what I'm going through. So he married a whore also who wasn't faithful. So then when he preached to the children of Israel, he could be effective. Am I making sense? Because he, he himself had experienced the same thing. But yet God is forbidding Jeremiah from getting married. Huh? So, so God was bewedded to Israel, but they didn't want to be married to God. And this is what it's all about. God was married to this nation, but yet they didn't want to get married. And so there was a roller coaster there. One day they were all right. One year they were all right. The next year they were in bondage and exile because they were disobedient to God. Are y'all with me? Get on the right track. Get on the right path. So the people had sinned against God to the point where he was ready to give them up into captivity. And in fact, they did go into captivity in just a few short years. But yet, even while they perched on the edge of judgment, the Lord desires to see them turn back to him. Did y'all know that? God always wants his people, always wants his saints to turn back to him. I'm talking about the world, but I'm talking about those who know him, those who God has called. He wants them to turn back. Look what he says in Jeremiah 29. I'm just doing an introduction. I want you to see this real quick. Jeremiah 29, 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. See it? Go down to verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your deviners, it says, who are among you, deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. Doesn't that sound familiar? Everybody got a dream. Everybody got a dream. You look at the charismatic movement. The Lord gave me a dream. Everybody got a dream. If everybody got a dream and you're focused more on the dream, you put more emphasis on the dream than you are the word of God, something's wrong. Because really, the dream isn't the standard. The word of God is. Am I right? The word of God is the standard. What verse are we on? Nine. He says, for it is a lie. Don't believe it. It's a lie. They are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are complete for Babylon, I will visit you. See, God said, you're going into exile. You're going to be in bondage. But he says, I will visit you and fulfill you for my promise, right? And bring you back to this place. Watch this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans of welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will what? I will hear you. Verse uh, 12, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from the nations of all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. They were so disobedient that they were always, they always found themselves in bondage, always found themselves in exile because of their disobedience. Are y'all with me? Trying to paint a picture. So here, remember, the Lord wants his people to travel the right path. He wants us on the right path. He wants them on a path that will lead them in his direction. But the question is asked, will your lifestyle lead you to God? Is your lifestyle lined up with God? And I may not even be talking to you. I could be talking to somebody on Facebook. But will your lifestyle line you up with God? See it? That's the question. See, the Bible says they say they love me with their heart. He says with, with their mouth, but their heart is what? Far from me. See? You love me, you say it with your mouth, but your heart's not there. Do you really love me? You know, it's like a man says, baby, I love you, but he's slapping her around. Am I right? Pop, pop, shut up. But you really don't love her. Because you're slapping her, you really don't love her. Am I right? So remember, the Lord wants his people to travel the right path. While this word of correction was spoken to Jews many years ago, there's a lesson in this verse for me and you in the modern church today. Did y'all hear me? There's a lesson in all this for me and you. So, so the question is asked, are you on the right path? That's the question. Remember, there is a right path and there is a wrong path. We must be sure we are walking on the one which God has ordained, the one that he can bless us, the one that he can be honored. Is God honored in your life? Is God honored about your life? Is God honored in what you do in life? That's the question. We're talking about holy living. We're talking about walking for God. We're talking about having a heart bent towards God. We're talking about loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. That's what we're talking about. Do we really love him? Hmm. Father God, we come, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to get into your word one more time. As I come, Lord Father God, I'm hiding behind the cliff of the rock. I'm asking that you would use me one more time to bring forth a word. Let it come forth with clarity. And Lord, that you would get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to look first of all at the requirement, a requirement. The command that God is issuing to his people is for them not to allow themselves to be led astray by false prophets. That's it. And I think if you, if you look, if you understand, if you're really watching the world and you're watching what's going on, it's a lot of promises made, but nobody's delivering. The Lord is going to bless you. The Lord is going to give you. The Lord is going to bless you. He's going to give you. He's going to give you. Wait, wait a minute. Stop. Let's stick with the word because we want to get caught up in the hype of everything and we miss God. We miss God. Am I right? We don't want to get caught up in the hype. We want to be able to understand and dissect the word. It sounds good and it'll bring a lot of people in, but that ain't what God says. Let's be honest. That's not what God says. He will bless you. Sure. He will continue to watch over you. God does that. But you cannot get caught up so much. And that's what he's saying here to Jeremiah. He says, I did not ordain them to prophesy over your life. Am I right? But they were coming in the name of God, but yet God didn't send them. Huh? It's a whole lot of people coming in the name of God, and God told me to tell you this. But did he really? Did he really? Or perhaps you have an agenda. Hmm. Quiet. Let's look at the scriptures. Amen. I think it speaks louder than me. Let's look at Jeremiah 27, uh, 14 and 15. Jeremiah 27, 14, 15. He says, listen, here. he tells Jeremiah, do not listen to the words of the prophets. 
who are saying to you, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you. I have not said them, declares the Lord, but they are prophesying falsely in my what? In my name. With the result, they will drive you out and you will perish. Many people are going to hell because they are believing the so-called prophets. That's what it's, I'm, am I? I don't know, maybe I, I don't know something. I will drive you out and you will perish, you and the prophets who are prophesying to you. And I did not ordain it so. And the question is, what path are you on? What path are you on? Are we really, I believe we're all on the right path, but I got to do this. It's kind of like a preventive maintenance. You know, it's like a preventive maintenance deal. And it may be somebody that may not be on the right path. But I know this one thing, Joe Lucas is going to drop this robe of flesh. I'm going to leave here, and then guess what? It might not be too long. Five, 10, 20 years, that's not long, sweetheart. I'm going to leave here one day, and guess what? I'm all right with that because I know that my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I know that I'm committed. I know my heart is right and bent towards God. But the question is, are you on the right path? That's it. Are you on the right path? So they are to look back to men like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and others who walked the path of obedience and holiness before the Lord, and they are to seek, watch this, the path for themselves. We need to look at folks that's rightly dividing the word of God, that's standing firm, that's walking in the right path. This is what you need to follow. Not I promise you, and God's going to do that. I heard one guy say, God's going to give everybody in here three houses with your name on it in 24. Wait a minute. First, the Negroes might, might have bad credit. So how are you going to get past the credit? You're promising something you can't deliver. You got to fix the credit first. You ever going to wreck the credit? I'm gonna, he, he told me, my pastor prophesied that I'm going to get three houses. Negro, your credit bad. I don't know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, am I right, Mike? I can't take it. How are you going? You can't even buy a car. And if you do, your interest rate is going to be 50% interest. <laughs> Some of them ain't got what? No job. How are you going? You see my point? But yet my pastor told me. My pastor said, I'm going to get three houses with my name on it in 24. Stop lying. God says, I did not send you. Am I right? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, when I hear that stuff, I told my wife, we were sitting there watching. I said, baby, they dum-dums. Didn't, didn't I say that? I said, they are dum-dums to believe that God is going to. You, you see my point? God can do anything, but let's be real. We had a class one time. I think I had Sister Jeffries come in here, finance lady. And she did a great class, and the Obi took it over. Remember that? And people were buying houses. Y'all, y'all remember that? People were buying houses and everything, and it, it went well. But they had to be taught to manage their credit. Am I making any sense? But yet, you go somewhere else, they tell the people, oh, you don't have to go through all that. God got that. God going to take care of you. Stop! That is not so. That is a lie. Am I right? Stop that foolishness. <laughs> I can't take no more. So we need men that are going to preach sound doctrine that love God with all their heart and all their soul and all their might. That's what you need to follow. Am I right? If even when you leave here, guess what? If you leave here today or tomorrow, find somewhere where you can grow. Find somewhere where you can trust the pastor and the, and the people in the church. Am I right? So God wants wants Israel to be on the right path. That was his whole goal. Amen? The problem Israel faced is a problem people have faced down through the ages. During World War II, hear this out. During World War II, during the Battle of the Bulge, there was a group of German soldiers who dressed themselves in the, in the outfits of their allies, and they went out through all of Germany changing the street signs. And when they changed the street signs, the Americans would come down, but they actually had the American vehicles. They changed the signs, and so when the Americans went in, they went different ways, the way that they were not supposed to go because they were deceived. 
See, by false soldiers. It was blessed that they won the war, but yet they were led astray. And there's so many people in the church are being led astray because they are under false prophets. See, the street signs have been changed, and because the street signs are changed, they are detouring. They're going another way. Am I right? Hmm. Just like the German soldiers caused confusion and death by changing a few signs, so many in our day are leading millions off into hell because they are changing some of the road signs of faith. I'm not, I don't, look, listen, I'm not in this for popularity. I'm not in this to say, look at the fact. No. If we have 100 members, if we have five, it don't matter. Because it's going to be said this. He's going to say, Pastor Lucas, come here. You're accountable for what you did there. Am I going to get everything right? No. But I want to make sure I'm trying to get everything right. Or some things, right? Am I right? So it, it behooves me to stick with the book and don't vacillate. Am I right? Huh. So allow me to share a few of the road signs that are being changed in our day. I'm not going to even be long today. The road signs that are being changed. The world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road signs of salvation through the blood. They are changing the road signs, salvation through the blood. People say, you don't need the blood anymore. You don't need Jesus' blood. You can go in different ways. There's different avenues into this thing called heaven. Huh? Look at Hebrews 9.22. 9.22. Y'all don't mind, D. Mm, okay, amen, man. You gave, me the, you gave me the gate. Green light. He says, and 22 says, indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with what? With blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Ain't no way. So, so the blood is very essential for salvation. It's a prerequisite for salvation. If you don't have the blood, you don't have salvation. Well, I got yoga. I got this. I got meditation. I got sage. Well, wait a minute, sweetheart. It's no blood. You need the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. He says, I'm justified by the blood. Look at Romans 5, 9. I'm going to zoom through this, guys. Y'all just stay with me. 5, 9 says, since therefore we have now been justified by what? His blood. Much more shall we be saved uh, by him from the wrath of God because we have now been justified by his blood. God sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ and he sees us as being perfect in Christ. He sees us through the lens of that blood, and we've been cleansed. You see it? So we've been justified. And another one is forgiveness. Ephesians 1, 7. Just, just write it down. He says, in him, we have redemption through his blood. See, that's forgiveness. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. We have forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. So... If you're trying to come another way beside the blood, you're headed to a burning hell. I'm not a bad person. Well, guess what? We all are bad people. Every one of us. The Bible says it in Romans, right? We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. We all, we all jacked up. But because of the blood, the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, the forgiving blood of Jesus Christ, we are now perfect in Christ. Are y'all with me? Somebody said, you beat this up every week. I got to. Because I want you to get it. Look what he says in 1 John 1, 7. He says this. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Watch this. In the blood of Jesus, watch this. His son cleanses us from all unrighteousness, from all of your mess and my mess. See it? So the, so the blood is a cleansing agent. Huh? It cleans us. Think about it. Even your blood in your body is a cleansing agent. Without the blood, guess what? You die. There's life in the blood. And there's super life in Jesus' blood. Huh? Because he don't only give just life, but he gives eternal life past this world. Hmm. Am I right, Courtney? Courtney said, oh, you got to put me on the spot. Am I right? Amen. 
So believe, watch this, salvation through the blood, but also believe in the, in the scriptures. See, the world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road signs of believing in the scriptures. You can believe in some of the scriptures. You don't have to believe in them all. You can believe in this book and that book. You put this book together, you got the whole thing. No, 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 no. We got the whole book. We got the whole loaf. Am I right? Look at, look at 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. He says all scripture, not some, all scripture is what? Breathed out. Who is it breathed out by? By God. And profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correcting me and you, and for training us in righteousness. It has everything we need, the word of God. It meets every part of our life, the word of God. Am I right? Psalms 119. 11989. 11989. It says this. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heaven. See? He says, Your word is established. Your word is what we need to get us along this life. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield to them to put their trust in them. Add not to my word, lest I reprove you and you be found a liar. He said, Don't add to it. And I don't even want you to take away from it. Every piece of the word of God is pure. Am I right? I was looking, I was looking up my, I know a lot of these. I was looking up um, uh, the scripture, the first article that we had to learn. I know a few of them still. Um, I know a lot of them, actually. But we believe that the Holy Bible, and this is us here at Christian Life Church, the Holy Bible is written by man, divinely inspired, that is a perfect treasure of heavenly instruction, that has God for its author, salvation for its end, truth without any mixture of error for its matter. Yeah, I got to make sure we write, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had to memorize all this. Mix of air force matter. That it reveals the principles by which God will judge us and therefore is and shall remain to the end of the world, the true center of Christian union, the supreme standard by which all human conduct, creeds, and opinions should be tried. That is the scriptures. And that's what it does for me and you. See, we don't need to add anything to this. The word of God is what them young boys say, tight. Amen? It's tight. You don't have to add a whole lot to the word because the word is tight. All you got to do is live this thing and walk it out because the word by itself will stand. When all else fails, the word of God is going to still be standing. Am I right? So the word of God stands and it is inspired. Here's another one. The world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road signs of the love for the church. You don't see a love for the church anymore. I don't know about y'all. We don't see a love for the church. Nobody go to church, but they say they want to be a part of the church. I know the Lord, but, but, but really, where your, heart, where your heart is, wait a minute, where your what? Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. It don't necessarily mean money either. Where you put your most time, that's where your heart really is. Huh? If my, if my time, if my heart is bopping on the floor, right? But yet I say I love God, something wrong. I don't give God nothing, but I say I love him. But I give all the world everything. Hmm. Somebody said I'm getting cut. Huh? <laughs> Angelica, hey, hey, what's up? Somebody said I'm getting cut. Huh? So love for the church. Matter of fact, let's back it up with some words. Look at Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. I ain't going to speak nothing that I don't, I don't know. 10, 24, 25, it says this. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. See, that, that's a good thing, isn't it? He says, but listen, listen to what he says. But not neglecting to meet together. Talking about in the church house. As it is a habit of some not meeting together, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near, he said, we need to come together. It's something about seeing your face, whether you come in late or not. It's something about seeing your face. It's something about me seeing your face and your face and you seeing my face. There's a joy in that. The Bible said, do not disassemble yourselves from the saints, but come together. Am I right? Something about that. Coming together. I played golf uh, yesterday with some of the brothers, man, and we, uh, most of them was Christians. 
had a ball. It's something about being around God's people. It's something, because listen, I don't know if you know it or not, if you're not pulling the world, the world's pulling you. If you feel you're not strong enough to hang around the world, don't do it. Because the world will pull you back down. Am I right? And then God got to get his spiritual belt out and put something on your behinds. Am I right? <laughs> Somebody say, look, the world is saying now, I can stay home to worship. I can stay home. I don't, I don't need a church. God know my heart. Anybody ever heard that one? He know my heart. Well, he know that your heart is far from him. Because if it wasn't far from him, you go to the store and you go where you want to go. But yet when it comes to God's stuff, I'm going to slide him because he knows my heart. Huh? Deceitful. I love coming to the house. My wife's not feeling good. She's taking off for the next couple of days. She said, I'm going to go out today. She's here. She's taking off. She had to go to the doctor's yesterday. But she said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, come out to church. I'm, I'm going to relax for the next three days. Yeah, I get it. But, but, but one thing about it, we know that when we come together, it's something about coming together. I don't care if it's a thousand here or a few here. It's something about seeing your face. Something about Melissa's face, isn't it? Melissa come in, and now she got the cook there, the guy that can cook those, uh, what is those things you cook? Bristle, briskets? Yeah, brisket. The man that cooked the brisket. He's here. Brisket maker. The brisket maker. Huh? And so, so it's just a joy. When I see him come, I say, hey, man, that's my boy. You see my point? Yeah, it's, it's a joy. I don't understand, but it's just a joy to know when we see one another. I call, these brothers call me. How you holding up, Pastor? I might call him. What's going on, man? Me, I think we talked this, didn't we talk this week? Yeah, yeah we talked about some things. It's good. You know, we might go out to eat breakfast. I mean, this is good stuff. But it's something about being around the saints. When you're around the world, they're going to pull you. And they're going to talk about their stuff. And if you're not doing their stuff, and you're going to try to hang in there and be cool too, well, yeah, I, I do that too. And you, and you look like this when you say it, because you don't do it. I look like this too, your pants up here. I, yeah, I, no, you don't do that. So why are you faking like you do it? You don't do it. Am I right? The world will pull you there and then leave you. Am I right? So, so, so watch this now. The world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road signs of the reality of heaven and hell. See, I ain't no heaven. I had people tell me that. I ain't no hell. When we leave here, that's it. We done. Well, I, I, I beg to differ because I believe the word of God. Reality of heaven and hell. Look at John 14. John 14, 1 through 3. I believe in the word of God, man. John 14, 1 and 3. Got it? Okay, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, Jesus says. In my Father's house. Where is the Father's house at? Heaven. Are many rooms, many mansions. If it was not so, I would, tell, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Uh, from what Jesus is saying here, there must be a heaven somewhere. Uh, it must be a, another place in the third heaven somewhere, a place where God abides. It must be another place. Am I right? He says, in my father's house, there are many mansions, many rooms. If it was not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. If I don't go, I, you, you, your place won't be right. I want to make sure you got a place. So Jesus promised all believers, not, not unbelievers, but all believers that I will come again and take you to myself. And the question is asked, do we have any believers in the house? Do we have any believers in the house that got real estate in heaven right now? I don't know about you. Huh? You know, somebody said, yeah, I got this house, and I got that house, and I got that big house up on the hill. Isn't that all right? Amen. And the house I got now don't even compare. Am I right? It don't mean anything. Am I right? So here it is. Look, look at this. Let's talk about hell real quick. They say it ain't real. That's, that's the enemy's trick. Uh, Psalms 9, 17. 
Psalms 9, 17. That's why you usually get Mickey. I'd be like, okay. The wicked shall return to who? Sheol. All the nations that forget God. Everybody that forgets God is going to hell. I got sisters and brothers and cousins. I can hear y'all now, right? Some people got mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts and friends, and they headed to hell. And it behooves you to tell them. Uh, do y'all know what hell is? Will there be weeping? And gnashing of teeth, crying, gnashing of teeth. Oh, God, how could you put me here, God, you see? And they're crying and they're weeping, but yet they're in a place of torment for eternity. It says, where the worm dieth not. You put a worm in the fire here, he dies. But there he won't. He's going to give you a body suitable to sustain you through the eternal torment. Mm, we got friends going there. Am I right? So the road sign of Christian universalism, they believe that everybody goes to heaven. Y'all know that, right? Christian universalism. Universalism. They believe everybody goes. Everybody. You mean the man that just don't give a day like you asking about, I don't care about God, but he's going to heaven? Yeah. That's what they say. That's deception. See, see, the enemy has changed the road sign to say that everybody's going. And then he's changed the road sign and said nobody's going to hell. Am I right? They believe everyone goes to heaven. That's deception. Everyone has salvation. That's deception. Matthew 25, real quick. I'm almost done. It's a short sermon this week. 25. Look at Matthew 25. 2532. It says, before him, watch this, Jesus speaking, will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people from one another as a sheep separates the sheep from the goats, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right hand, right? But the goats will be on the left hand. Go down to 41. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you are cursed into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angel. That's real talk. Just perhaps it's true. What do you got to lose? Just perhaps it's true. But if it is true, you're going to lose a lot if you don't receive them. Huh? We talk about eternal life. We talk about another place is a place of torment. Am I right? Everyone is not going to heaven. That's a fact. And that's what the Bible says. The value of the human soul is another thing that they've changed the road signs to. That your soul is not valuable to God. And I beg the difference. Everybody's soul here, saved or unsaved, is valuable. Why do you think God went through all this? Why do you think God begged Israel? Why do you think God used Jeremiah? Why do you think God used Hosea and went through all the heartache and the headache? Because he loved you so much and he loves your soul. Am I right? Look at this real quick. Mark 8, 36. Mark 8, 36 and uh, 37. the value of the human soul. Look what he says. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, all the money, all the houses, all the cars, and yet forfeit his soul? Have all the money, all the 401ks, the IRAs, all this stuff, all the investments, but yet lose his soul. The next verse says, For what can a man give in return for his soul? Your soul is valuable to God. The enemy wants to change the road signs to say that your soul 
does not have any value. Michelle, your soul is valuable to God. Y'all hear me? Your soul is valuable to God. Facebook, your soul is valuable to God. But he wants you to give it over to him. He wants to save your soul. Y'all get me? It's not about show. It's not about all this other stuff. He said, well, I got things going on right now. You don't understand. He says, come as you are. I'll deal with the rest. I got habits. I'll deal with that. He said, I can forgive you of all that. Just what I'm, I'm still in this habit. I'm still struggling. That's okay. I want your heart. I want your soul. He said, I don't care about all the other stuff. I'll deal with that eventually here or there. Because you grow by grace to grace and faith to faith, right? Hmm. So the enemy wants you to hold on to the world so you will miss heaven. Huh? Are y'all with me? Coming to a close. The world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road signs of the soon return of Christ. It's coming back. Well, pastor, they've been saying that for years. Jesus ain't coming back. Well, I, I like to say what the Bible says. The Bible says that a thousand years here for us is one day to God. So, that, so God is just days away, maybe one day away. Huh? Maybe, a le- maybe a half hour away. You see? So you got to understand it from that perspective that God is going to return. Amen? And if he don't return before you leave here, you're going to drop this robe of flesh. It's going to go to the grave, and your soul is either going to go to heaven or hell. Hmm. The return of Christ has been distorted. Doubted. Look at this, Revelations 2011. Revelations 2011. I'm, I'm taking my time today. Is that all right? I ain't hyped today, huh? Ready? 2011 and 12. Watch this. John says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it from his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. Books. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the books? I don't think it's going to be like God already know. But can you imagine? I'm just using this as an example. <laughs> hey, look, can you imagine? Mike Winston. I don't have a Mike Winston. And then the angels come and they take you. Ah! And they go into a burning hell. <laughs> O.B. Green. Hey, O.B. Green. O.B. Green. I don't see, hey, look, God be like, you know, I just, God ain't gonna do, God be like, oh, I don't see Obi Green. And Obi gonna be like, the name ain't Obi, it's Ormsby. Ormsby, it's not, that's my nickname. I can see him there. (laughs) Oh, come on up, come on up. I gotta come back to you, Mike. Kylene McKinney. Kylene McKinney. Let me see. Y'all got any more books? You're going to have a bunch of books looking for your stuff. I see a Ron McKinney here. Ronald, that's your name? Ronnie? I see a Ronnie McKinney. I don't see a Kylie McKinney. Huh? Oh, (laughs) E-A-N. I I want you to understand this, that that, that some wives are not going to make it in, some husbands are not going to make it in, but their partner will, because one thing about a heart, nobody knows it. 
The Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Huh? But God. God's the only one really know if I'm saved or not. I could be sitting there preaching to you and not be saved. Even look like I'm saved. I know my pastor's saved, but yet my heart is far from him. I mean, it's not like that. I just want to make sure y'all know that. <laughs> Joseph Lucas, he's going to go like this. You on the front cover now. <laughs> now, I, I, I don't want to sound arrogant. They're going to say Michael Moon. Let me see. Oh, uh, he lived on the golf course so much, he neglected everything. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to make it. He's not in here. <laughs> Rico. Is it, what's your name, Rico? Durrell. Durrell? What's your last name? Baker. Baker. Durrell Baker. Let me see. Durrell Baker. Huh? Second page? I don't see it on the second page, brother. No, 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 Durrell. Depart from me. Now, 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 look, here's the ugly side. You're going to be escorted. I want you to get this. Into hell. You're going to be escorted into this place. Take them away from you. The angels are going to escort you in that place of torment. Come on, man. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God and hell more than anything in the Bible. Did y'all know that? He did. People said, why are you, why are you talking about hell, Pat? You scared? You trying to grow a show? Yeah, but I want to give them truth. I don't want you to come and, and go to hell when you say, well, I was a part of the church. So the world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road sign. The soon return of Christ. They're changing it. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. 1 Thessalonians 4. Watch this. 13. It says this. Talking about the coming of Christ. It says, but we do not want you to be ignorant. I want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, right? Who have left this world, right? That you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. See, when you don't have hope and you leave up out of here, you're in a mess. But it's something about that blessed hope that help you get through. I told you I saw my mother. Sudden, she's in the hospital. They call. I said, Oh my, during COVID, let me go see my mother. They said, She's not gonna make it for a minute, just for a second. My heart dropped to the floor. I said, My mama, I'm a mama's boy, my mama. And I sat back. She said, She's gonna try it again, dialysis and all that. Long story short, he said, We tried it, her blood pressure dropping too much. Give her two, three weeks. And she left that very, that very day, three hours, two hours later. I'm saying it to say this, I felt good about it. You know why I felt good about it? I knew that she knew God. I, that's called the blessed hope. I talked to a mom, she, don't worry about me. She was talking like this, don't worry about me. I know, I know God, I'm ready. My mama said that to me. So then I had to preach the eulogy and I preached the eulogy, I'm ready. That's my mama, you see? But when you got that blessed hope, you don't have to worry, oh, oh, God. You don't have to crawl in the casket. Because I understand, she's all right. And if she wasn't all right, guess what? God is still sovereign. Hmm. But you get somebody that don't have that blessed hope, they're going to jump in the casket. They're going to make noise. Anybody ever seen that? They're going to cry, and they're going to, as soon as they close the camera, ah! they're going to go up and want him to open it back up one more time, please. I got to see my mama, and then they got to pull him away because there's no hope. Mm -mm. First Thessalonians 4.13, watch this. But we do not want you to be uh, uninformed, brothers, or ignorant about those who have fallen asleep, but you may, uh, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. See, that's important. For since we believe that Jesus died, rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep, those who have dropped this robe of flesh. Am I right? For this we declare to you 
by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. Now, I want to I wanna give you a breakdown. A lot, a lot of y'all know this. If you pass right now, your body goes to the grave, cremation or the grave, wherever you decide, is your business. That's where you're going. That's where your body is. But your soul is either with God or in a holding cell. See, the holding cell would be a place like the detention center. And it's being held there to go to hell. Are y'all with me? So either or, got me? Are y'all with me so far? So, so what I'm saying to you, well, I was saying something I forgot. Oh, <laughs> look at Sean looked at me like, what? Huh? So the dead in Christ, here it is, will raise first. See it? So, so right now, if Christ breaks the sky, and you can peel the cover off of this roof here, and God allow you to see heaven in the spiritual world, world, you will see demons, right, which are falling angels. You will see them all around. You will see angels, right? And you would see the dead in Christ, which would be my mother's body because her soul is gone, right? Her body would come up first, and this would happen in the twinkling of an eye, like this. Her body's gone to meet her soul and her spirit. Am I right? So now it's with her soul and her spirit. She no longer has the intermediate body. She has that body, but God changed it to a body that is suitable for heaven. Are y'all with me? Okay. So now the dead in Christ is raised, and then it says those that remain and are left shall be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with God. That means that everybody here that knows God, right now if he comes, the dead in Christ, this happens like this. Your body goes, just like this. And somebody will be left here. Might be about half of y'all left here. Not a lot, I hope not. But Jill will be sitting up here like, what happened? I'll be gone. The mic will drop, stuff. I'll have something in my hand be like, y'all be like, what happened to Pastor? Gone. Out of here. Mike will be still sitting in the back trying to record stuff. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm playing with you, brother. Uh, I'm playing with you. But he's still struggling back there. He's still trying to figure it out, him and Darrell, <laughs> together. Uh. <laughs> hey, look, we may be laughing, but I want y'all to hear this. You want to have that blessed hope. You want to make sure that your name is written, that if he drops his robe of flesh right now, that you be with God. Or if he comes right now, that he snatches you out of here. Am I right? <laughs> Don't be deceived. Look at the scripture. Let's finish up. I'm still all over the place. For there we, de listen, for this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel. That means the angel is going to represent him, right? With the trumpet, I can heck can imagine now. Can you imagine that? Hey, whatever that be, whatever that is, right? Uh, where we at? It says, for the Lord Himself would descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will raise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Then I like what He said. Therefore. Encourage one another with these words. If you got good news, you want to share it. If you got good news, you want to let somebody know, I want to encourage you that you need Jesus. And I'm going to encourage you that he will save your soul. I want to encourage you that one day you're going to go to heaven if you know God. But if you don't, you're going to hell. He says, encourage one another with these words. Am I right? Huh. So don't be deceived. He is coming back. And I got one more. Here it is. The world, the evil, the enemy is changing the road signs of the holiness of God. That you don't have to live holy. Huh? You don't have to live holy? What is this? I mean, come on. We don't have to live holy. We try to bring God down to man's level. But you got to understand, he's holy. Y'all remember what they said, right? The children of Israel. Moses, it's not fair. You always going to Mount Sinai talking to God. Come on, man. You ain't nobody special. 
Yeah, yeah, he talk, we want him to talk to us. All right, let me talk to God. God, what do you think about them? Well, you tell them to clean their clothes, and I will visit them tomorrow. Clean their clothes and get ready to meet me, right? Well, they cleaned the clothes. They did all everything God said do. They did it all. Man, they go to the edge of the mountain. They ain't even get there yet. Boom! Thunder and lightning and all this stuff. They were like, no! Moses, we don't want to talk to God. We don't want to see God. We don't want nothing to do with God. God is nothing to play with. We trifle with God. God ain't nothing to play with. I, you know, I, I started sitting down at my desk, and then I started laying in the bed in the morning, and then I go sit at my desk, and I pray again. And God said, get on your knees, man. What you doing? You talk to me. You remember? Mike was saying that. Mike says, man, I, I said, man, I had to realize I wasn't hitting my knees. And he don't even know he was speaking to me. He was speaking to me that day. And I, we get in the habit of talking. Ain't that wrong? You, you don't have to always get on your knees, but somewhere you got to show the reverence for your God. Don't play with him. God is real, man. He wants us to hit our knees. It's okay to lay in the bed too, but he wants you to hit your knees, man. He wants you to call on him. He wants you to reverence him. Are y'all with me? And when you ain't got nothing to say, just sit there. Just go like this. Thank you, Lord. Be still. Yes. If you got nothing to say, just sit there. Three minutes, two, whatever it might be. He'll speak to your heart, and if you don't hear anything, that's okay. He honors the reverence. And, if, and, and I noticed something. I noticed something. When you open the book, it may be one scripture. It may be a daily bread. It may be something, but you got something to meditate on. And see, you'll find yourself through that word, you'll find yourself praying that very word with, about your life. Lord, help me. You said in your word, we don't have to be afraid. Help me today not to be afraid. Lord, do it. At, you know, and you can go on and on just, with, just dealing with that one word. You have to read the whole book or the whole chapter. If you do, great, but you don't have to. God wants to speak to your heart. God wants you to honor him. He wants you to respect him, the holiness of God. Am I? Watch this real quick. Isaiah 6, 3. Mike, get that mic, Mike, Mike. Get that. You got it? Yeah, 6 3. Isaiah 6 3. I want you to y'all see this real quick. You don't, don't try, you don't play with God. God's holy, man. Isaiah 6 3. No, 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 man. You're online, man. That's why I say get the mic, bro. Yeah. You, you talk, nobody can hear you. I can hear you. Isaiah 6 3. Isaiah 6 3 reads, and one called to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Man, I hope they don't say it like that. <laughs> holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And one called to the other and said, holy, 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 yeah, holy you know. is the Lord of yeah. hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Yes, angel. To see in the presence of the Shekinah glory of God. And they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Yeah. See? Look at Mike, don't play with <laughs> But the angel is not trifling with God. The angel is honoring God. He realized that he's in the presence of God. Matter of fact, go back and look, look, look at the scripture. 6-1. Isaiah. This is the vision of the Lord, Isaiah. In the, well, I got it, Mike. In the year that who? King Uzziah died. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up in the train of his robe. You ever see a woman's robe, the train of it when she gets married? The train of his robe, what? Fills the temple. See it? And above him stood the seraphim. That's an angel. There's cherubim, seraphims, archangels. But that's a seraphim. Each had six wings. Two he covered his face. Two he covered his feet. And two he fled with. I think the two to cover his eyes, that he covered his eyes in reverence of God. It was two over his eyes like this. And two covering his feet for the holy and the reverence of God. And he probably had his wings in. 
out of reverence for God. But when they take off, my, 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 I would love to see that, wouldn't y'all? I would love to see that. What verse? Three, go ahead, Mike. And the Lord called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So that was an angel talking to another angel. He says, what does it say? And one called to another. You know, like Naja, me and you angel, come on up here, girl. Come on up here. Oh, I know you hurt me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I ain't gonna mess with you. But holy, 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 and then he looks back at me, yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory, the whole place. And the Bible, says, it even says that the door shook. Because, matter of fact, let's read it. Where's it at? Four. Go ahead, man. Kick it right, brother. And the foundations of the earth, I mean, and the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called in the house was filled with Woo! smoke. You see? You're talking about God. Go ahead, brother. Five. And he said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man <clears throat> of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. What made him say, Woe? The, the presence of God. The higher you see God, the more holy you see God, the more unholy you see yourself. He saw God on another spectrum. He saw God way up here. He said, whoa, whoa, I can't do it. He said, Lord, this is too much for me. Wow, I'm unclean. You know, what, what does he say? And he said, woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. You see it? Hmm. When I read that, when I read that, I, it's something come over me because I realized he's talking about the holiness of God. And you think about Moses when he said, Moses, Moses, get behind the cliff of the rock. No man can see me in my essence and live. He says, he says, he says, wait until I, I pass by and you'll see my shadow, my hind part. And as you see my hind part, that's what my old pastor used to say, hind part. That means your tail, right? <laughs> you'll see my hind part. He said, look at that. And even looking at the hind part of God, it says that his hair was, 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 was silver. Why? Because he had the Shekinah glory on him. And when he came down, off the mountain, the people saw it and said, whoa, Moses. And it began to fade. Y'all remember? That shine, that Shekinah glory began to fade. And when it began to fade, he put a veil over his face. Because he didn't want them to see the Shekinah glory failing. Y'all with me? So then he go back up. He was, he was addicted to God. He was addicted to that Shekinah glory. He loved God, so he kept going up on the mountain. So when people say, try to take away the holiness of God, come on, man, you got the wrong, you got the wrong one. You talk about the God of the universe. You talk about a holy God, am I right? Look at 1 Peter real quick. 1 Peter 1, 16. Watch this. Yeah, that word speak louder than me. I can talk, but now that word is just so powerful. 116 through 18. I got it. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on, his, on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves mm -hmm. with fear throughout the time of your exile, mm -hmm. knowing that you that you were ransomed for the futile ways inherited from the for, from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold. So so he's saying, stop trying to bring God down to your level. He's holy. Am I right? Yeah. He is a potentate ruler. He is the creme de la creme. And if you look it up, look up creme de la creme. He's the one, huh? Look up potent ruler. He is the one. He's the potentate ruler. He is God. No, nobody supersedes him. Am I right? We need to honor him. We need to get on the right path. Proverbs 4, uh, 14, 12. And it says this. Watch this. 
Proverbs 14, 12. I'm going to stop right here. This is it. Proverbs 14, 12. Yep, 14, 12. Watch this. We all know this, but watch this. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. That is the deception. There's a way that seems right because people have been taught and they have, they have been deceived to believe that there's another way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the way. And Jesus requires the holiness of God. He requires the blood. Amen? And because of that, we can stand here Save. We can stand here and say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. If you're here and you're on the wrong path, or you're not sure what path you're on, today is your day. All heads are bowed, just for a minute. Just for a minute. And the question may be asked, what path are you on? What path are you on today? If you're on the right path, you will leave the world and seek the things of God. Easy to say, I'm, I'm okay, I'm going my, I'm on my way, but the question is, are you willing to leave the world? Are you willing to surrender your life today? This is real talk. This is not about coming to church and getting a shot and leave, and I'll get my shot next week. This is real talk about Jesus. And then he requires holiness. That's not the prerequisite for salvation, but when you come to Christ, he wants you to live holy, and he will give you what you need to live holy. And when you fall short, he will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will continue to watch over you. He will nurture you. He will grow you from grace to grace and faith to faith. If someone here today that may not know Jesus, say, I want to know Jesus today. And I feel the tug of Jesus pulling me. Don't fight it. He's pulling on me. Whether it's on Facebook, whether it's here, he's pulling on me. I feel it. That means that he wants you to be saved. There's a tug. There's a pull. There's a draw. No man come except the Father. Draw him. There's a draw there for you. If you're listening to the sound of my voice and that's you and he's drawing you, say, Lord, I'm here. I'm here. And I ask, Lord, that you forgive me of all of my sins. All of us, all of us are sinners saved by grace. Say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I see you. I believe your son died on the cross for me. Save my soul. Save my soul. I feel the tug. I, I know that you're drawing me. Lord, save me. I want you right now. Save me. The Bible says thou shall be saved. I pray now that somebody in the sound of my voice, whether it's online, whether it's here, that may not know you, Lord, that they would surrender right now their life to you. And, Lord, they would find a Bible-believing church, not just a church that's going to give them the fluff and entertain them. Somebody that's going to teach them the Word of God, that they'll be able to understand it, they'll be able to grow, and, Father God, Lord, they'll be able to serve you. So even now, save someone's soul. Draw them to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. All heads about. If you're here today and you did that, I'm not going to pull you up front. Just put your hand up and say, I, I, that's me. All heads are bowed. That's me. Just put your hands up. I'll talk later. We'll talk later. Amen. 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 God bless you. I'm so glad I have a pastor that teaches us the word of God.